Veteran NASA astronaut Scott Kelly embarked on a historic mission in 2015. Ramping up. And liftoff. A year in space starts now. Kelly, Kornienko, and Padaka on their way towards the International Space Station. Mm. Scott Kelly blasted into orbit to begin his record-setting 340-day mission to help study the effects of long-term space flight on the human body. Kelly worked on more than 400 scientific studies during his time on the International Space Station. He conducted three spacewalks before returning to Earth in March 2016. Kelly has since retired as an astronaut. His new book, Endurance, A Year in Space, A Lifetime of Discovery, reflects on his time with NASA and his famous mission. Scott Kelly, good morning. Good morning. Talk about what has been the most significant in impact on you from well, this. On me personally, I think it's more of an impact on just how this overall experience has, has changed me, and I think for the better. When we spend time away from Earth and have this, you know, orbital perspective, I think it makes us more empathetic. You mean you're people. wiser about how we fit into a larger picture. Exactly, exactly. It was a real privilege to do this and uh, have this experience. But did you come back shorter? You know, I stretched. <laughs> I stretched a little bit. Yeah. Uh, but then I immediately shrunk that back down. My brother pointed that out to me. We were <laughs> sure back the, down to back to normal. Back to Earth, competition between you. Our boys, normal, our normal six foot six. But explain <laughs> that because. Part of the thing they measured, too, was yeah. your telomeres, which actually elongated, which they say, our scientists say, can be a, a sign of long, longevity. And you've told me that they kind of shrunk back. But what does that tell us about the science of, of the human body, about longevity, all those things? You know, that was an interesting experiment, a genetic experiment, because the, the hypothesis was me being in space, the radiation, the, uh, you know, challenging living and working environment would affect my telomeres, which is an indication of our physical age, in a negative way. Mm -hmm. And when, then when the results are the exact opposite of what you mm -hmm. expect, it's a really interesting experiment. And um, now I don't think it means that space is going to be a fountain of youth, but there's <laughs> definitely more to investigate there. But is it because of gravity? Is it because of radiation? Is it because of... Might just be the clean living in space. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, speaking of that, what were, you most space? what were you most excited about to have when you came home? Oh, you know, being around uh, people that I care about and love, the weather. Hamburgers um, that stayed on the plate as opposed to floating. Yeah, you know, floating is uh, makes most things challenging. But uh, I think, you know, in space, we don't have a lot of fresh like fruits Fair and days. vegetables, so people crave th that kind of thing. Well, you, when you write in the book, when you first arrived on the space station for nearly a year-long mission, you write, quote, it occurs to me for a moment that this might be one of the stupider things yeah. I've ever done. How, talk about the apprehension. Well, I had been there for uh, 159 days, just four years previously. So when I got on board, the place, you know, looks the same, smells the same, sounded the same, and this is day one, and I'm thinking, <laughs> man, I got a long road ahead of me. <laughs> the monotony of space. Which was harder, though, the, the psychological or the physiological? Absolutely the psychological part of it, you know, just being isolated, being separated from my family. My, my big concern was always not for my own physical safety, but something happening to someone I care about on the ground, which I experienced on my previous mission when my sister-in-law, Congresswoman Giffords, was shot. Mm -hmm. yeah. is, is NASA back in a sense? We had this thing about trying to develop supersonic speed, a uh, plane that can fly at supersonic speed without the kind of noise. Yeah. Um, they talk about landing on moon in 2030. Uh, they can do that. Mm -hmm. uh, you believe they can do that? Oh, absolutely. Um, absolutely believe that we have the, you know, the I technology. mean Mars, not the moon. Yeah, Mars. Mars yeah. W without a doubt. And, and coming back to? Yeah, absolutely. You know, my, I'll, I'll steal something my brother often says. He says it's not about, going to Mars is not about rocket science. It's about political science. Mm. Which is getting the will to spend the money to go there. Absolutely, mm -hmm. yes. You trained with the Russian space program as mm -hmm. well as the U.S. space program. What, what are the differences between the two? Um, there's a lot, you know, but they've been great colleagues. Um, they actually have to do a lot with less funding. They don't have the same, you know, source of uh, funding that we do in our space program. But they've been great partners, you know, that's what makes space and the space station so great. One of the things is that it's this international partnership where countries that are formally and sometimes at odds with each other or enemies can work together on something collaborative that benefits us all. Do you assume you've been in space for the last time? Um, I hope not, but uh, likely, you know, unless we get a pretty good stream of uh, commercial 
flights going. I, well, we may have from not from possibly. NASA, but from private. Yeah, absolutely, and that's where if I ever flew again, we'd probably there. Yeah, you said that it gave you a different feeling about how we a small part of a larger universe. Yeah. I mean, how does that affect your everyday life? I think it makes you more of an environmentalist looking at the planet. I think it makes you more of a, you know, a, kind of a humanist, you know, looking out at seven and a half billion people on Earth, no political borders. Mm. Right. And then just hearing all the news that, you know, happens on this planet on a daily basis, mostly bad news. Yeah. Talking to the choir here. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, it really changes you and make you, yeah. makes you more empathetic. So we should send all world leaders yeah. up to space. Yeah, we need those lessons back here on Earth. <laughs> Interestingly enough, Misha, my Russian colleagues, says if we want to solve problems between Russia and the United States, we should just send our two presidents to space for a year. Oh, right. I'm sure they're... <laughs> He's going to get in trouble now for that. Some ideas. Oh, I didn't say it. Some <laughs> ideas. That was Misha. Yeah. Captain you didn't Scott. say it was a bad idea, though. <laughs> Scott Kelly, thanks for your time, and welcome back oh. to Terra Firma. Thank you. Endurance goes on sale tomorrow.